Great to have you back here on The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. Our first major conversation this morning is a follow-up to something we already spoke about, and that is uh, the Minister of Labor, Chris Ngige, uh, of course, saying that there would be another uh, continued discussion with the um, uh, NARD, the National Association of Resident Doctors, to hopefully end their you know, strike, which has been on for about five days now. Over the weekend, also in an interview, um, Chris Ngigo was also, you know, seen making, you know, certain statements, you know, saying that, you know, they might invoke, you know, labor laws on the NARD and, of course, the doctors. And so we've uh, jo been joined this morning by the president of the National Association of Resident Doctors, Dr. Uilawa Okwaisui. Um, and, of course, he's uh, joining us to speak this morning and share recent updates uh, so far. Good morning, uh, Dr. Uilawa. Good morning, Thanks for joining us. All right. We are five days into the strike. Uh, quickly share with us uh, what has happened in the last five days. Online, there's, you know, people who I've, I've seen put out videos of not being able to get medical care in hospitals. Uh, there's also people who I mean, have, are, of course, uh, suffering a lot of the, you know, the effects of this strike. And, but what has the last five days been like for resident doctors? Have you gotten any message or word from the Nigerian uh, government? Is that it has been um, a stressful period for doctors and health workers generally because we have been at the brunt of all the insincerity and the bad governance of the country. And it's quite sad when you now start getting threats from those in authority and those that you feel would help you get the problem being solved. You see, he came in and said that um, we had a memorandum of action that was signed by us. But the essential truth is that the memorandum of action signed was for us to take it back to our members, the nationalized council, to review and see that what was given to us had been met. As it stands, apart from the abolishment of the bench fees, which suppress primary go to pay, none has been done. We are still being owed four months, four months salaries to house officers and residents if we are still being paid 5,000 naira as an allowance. A debt service insurance has been paid to anybody I a random of um, um, understanding last year and other years to come. So it has been a five-year period of insincerity, no commitment from government, just putting, um, putting pen to paper without honoring any action that was written down. So you come to ask them, is, are they really prioritizing health of your nation as part of the governance? It's just a simple question we are asking. And the strike is not just by me, it's by the National Association of Resident Doctors and NEC ex Executive. Okay, uh, we saw, you know, statements from NAD saying, we want an implementation of the agreement and not an MOU. Why is this? And I ask because, you know, it's these conversations, you know, drafting of MOUs that lead to, you know, the government fulfilling its own, you know, parts of the promise. So why is NAD insisting on not signing an MOU with the government? I'll tell you, I'll tell you for a fact that the things we have we written down now as things that have been on for over 10 years. The same issue of um, um, hazard allowance of 5,000 naira. You bet me that the minister said it has been done since, uh, the minister have said it since 1992. You bet was that the dilapidating um, state of all heads institutions have been alarming. In global best practices, you go for the best things to be able to accommodate all head workers to be able to work in the hospitals. If we had such things in our hospitals now, you would know that you don't need to travel anywhere to seek for health care. You claim you are doing um, things in the hospitals generally. But do you know that in most of the hospitals in Nigeria, we don't have any functional MRI, no functional CT scans. If somebody has cancer, you can, can barely tell which center you can do, do a radiotherapy. These are things we're asking the government. You, let, you make people to work, work, and work. And when eventually it comes and they die or they develop complications, they are left to suffer with their loved ones 
to suffer when they have lost the breadwinner of the house. You make people to work for four months and now to turn to begging for arms to even survive. And you think we're not human beings too? Ephesians oath tells, tells us to also take care of your health first before you can take care of people's health. If you are hungry, you are not able to eat, you're not even able to um, um, do the best basic things of life, then how would you give care to other people? Are there been old salaries up to now? None of them, I think, are old salaries. So do we need to travel out to get best health care when you can de develop us as in our country? Those are things we're asking Nigerians to help us ask the government to try and pay more responsibility to their teams in their own country. All right. Well, and also, take our money and use for medical tourism. Also, share a little bit. You, you mentioned threat messages uh, that you had received. Where are these coming from? And, you know, what kind of messages, you know, are we talking about here? Most of my members have been called by either the DSS and the police. And you heard one on, live on TV when the minister said he was going to implement no work, no pay. Those are antics of the government that they have done it to several, several people. But have you implemented um, such um, ways in trying to regulate those people that are the cause of the, of, the, of the strike? Have you implemented anything about the NBC registrar who refused to accumulate, let the house officers be paid? Have you um, implemented anything on the chief medical directors that played with the gift mix platform and let the uh, resident doctors be, not to be paid? Have you implemented anything on those that have left the hospital to be dilapidated and without paying any much interest in what's happening there? This is a question we should be asking. You are quick at wanting to punish when you don't try and correct the system. The system is a failure and has failed a long time back when you can provide basic things for the country and to the health sector. So if you want to implement any policy measure, it's implemented on those that have failed us and those that then tell us that an officer and don't know what to do. All these strikes are preventable. So if they are taught on how to do their jobs or taught to resign from their job when you're not competent enough to do the, do the right things, that's where we should go, go to. Not, not um, want to say no work, no pay, you bring local doctors to take over the works of residents that are trying to be specialists in neurosurgery, in orthopedic surgery, in cardio, and, and, and cardiac surgeries and you want to replace them with locum doctors. That means we have lost priorities, we have lost realities with what's happened in medicine. I hope, And I hope we go back to check what our priorities really are. I hope we can get to talk, you know, because I, I was really want to ask about CMDs now, but you, just before we get there, quickly share, when you say you've gotten, you know, your members have gotten calls from the DSS and from the police, are they asking that the strike be called off? Or are they, you know, making other statements that the public needs to hear about? I may not want to dwell into that because the next thing I will get a call also, which I've already gotten one earlier. Earlier, but those are things, antics, and those are things we suffer as being leaders. Sacrifices are made, and the choice of going on the strike is not an individual um, um, choice. The choice by the Nigerian Association of Doctors, by the next members, and they should pay more emphasis on trying to stop the problem and not cause other problems. All right. So they should direct their, their attacks on where they should direct their attacks to. Direct attacks on those people that have said that they have um, so, uh, given to the, to the insurance company 13.9 billion naira when most debt and service insurance have been paid to anybody. They should direct their, their attacks to when they say the, and the numbers given to the MDCN were over blotted and they have not done anything to put them to caution. That is where they should direct their attacks to. So if you're getting calls, if you claim to get calls from, from people in power to shove the strike, do you think this is becoming political? I don't, I don't want to look at the political goal. I want to look at the whole sum. The whole sum is getting best health care services in Nigeria, getting the hospitals to be equipped, getting the manpower to feed those uh, hospitals, and getting the writings done. That is where I lay my emphasis on. The, in the long run, we'll fight for Nigerians for a better healthcare, a better good facility to go get the best practices. 
the global best practices is what we are fighting for. And, and oh, if in all, when ways to try and prevent brain drain, because if you go abroad, you know that you have better um, better job security, better insurance, better places where you don't get kidnapped, better places where you know your welfare is put at top of priority, and you allow people to travel, then we wonder what happens to our parents and loved ones when they fall ill and are not able to travel. We may not all be opportune enough to travel abroad, but you can develop where you are and where you can get good health care, and things will work well for all Nigerians. So they should not look at it as an attack on the government. They should not look at it as a political statement. They should look at it as sensitizations of Nigerians to ask the question that the government should be more responsible. All right. Now, now let me bring back the, um, uh, the part where the CMDs, uh, the role of CMDs, um, over time. I grew up in Benin, so, uh, you know, I went through, um, actually lived, you know, around UBTH for a long time. And so, uh, you know, it's always been something that I've heard a lot about. Uh, corruption from uh, chief medical directors and the likes. So do you, you know, also blame them a lot for the failure of the systems um, across hospitals, you know, in Nigeria, uh, state and, um, you know, federal hospitals? Do you think that CMDs have also completely failed to properly fund the hospitals or properly utilize funds in hospitals? I, I won't say CMDs have um, failed in funding the hospital. The funding of the hospitals is from the government. Well, I would say CMDs have failed in not being truthful to the system. I'll give some examples. If you go to a federal neurosecretary hospital in Yaba, you will find out that most of the doctors there are looking doctors, not permanent staffs. They have told us time without number, telling us that there's a, there have been an embargo on employment. I intend to employ resident doctors that are, that are saying are not even enough as locum doctors, and you pay them virtually half of their salary. This is an alarming, and we need to put them on check. And that's why we may need to call on the ICPC and EFCC to try investigate what is happening within the hospital and the health sector generally. You don't um, put gold salaries meant for employ um, employees and keep them. Then you, uh, you employ those that you know you pay half half some of money and are not in training yet. It is over, or take over what residents really do. That is where I call them to, into, to be responsible enough. And I also go back to um, the list we sent for the, for the interns, where we, from our session, sent about 2,136 to the government. Meanwhile, they're telling us that they, are, they have virtually more than half of that number. So you now come to say, what is the idea in sending such numbers when you know they're not really your employees? Those are things I need needs to be investigated. And we need to check it to know that we are being said to Nigerians as first before you now blame governments on that. Okay. Everybody has a role to play in what is happening in Nigeria. And it's high time everybody sits up to keep give um, Nigeria a better care in the health sector. Okay, so talking about that, just how much support do you think you know you've received or the doctors have received from, from Nigerians regarding the strike? I would say for the first time, every Nigerian know that this is not our fault. And I must commend the media house and the people on Twitter, televisions, and Nigerians that have seen that really we are suffering and taking us not just for us, for being responsible to Nigerians to deliver better health care. And we say a big thank you to you all. But I also want to call on Nigerians to please come and cry out more to the, to the government and tell them that being responsible means taking care of your economy, taking care of your health sector, taking care of Nigerians, making sure the having Nigerians are able to at least get the best for all us, all of us in Nigeria. Medical tourism that have been, that is now one of the problems we are facing is a way of putting a drain on the economy of Nigeria. If you are able to develop your own country, I guess the amount spent on such journeys can be minimized to the, to the minimum level. You should be able to be able to purchase such equipment that you claim are not in Nigeria to, to all, all hospitals in Nigeria 
and to help a lot in developing your country. All right. It's one of the plights we ask Nigerians to beg them, the government, to be able to invest more in their health sector. Dr. Uyilawa, uh, with all the threats, you know, that you said, you know, your, yourself and other of your members have received, and of course, uh, the message that the Minister of Labor, Chris Ngege, Dr. Chris Ngege, um, is also putting out, are you still saying that if there is no implementation of the demands that the NARD has made, um, and of course, payment of your four month salaries, uh, increment of your hazard allowance, amongst other things, are you saying that if these things do not, you know, are not implemented, the strike will not be called off? Or is there room still for negotiation? The, the directive from the National Executive Council have given us the power to tell government that until our demands are, are men, the, the, the total and indefinite strike will continue. They can implement anything they want instead of implementing the right things. And we will stay by what we have sworn to as being the Executive Council to be able to, to make sure that we fight for the welfare of all our members. And the no work, no pay um, threat, you know, does that scare you? It's too scary because we're already not having, having been paid for four months. So what more threat can you have when you have not been paid for four months? We're already suffering what the no work, no pay will do. And if he wants to inflict more sufferings on, on the health sector and on doctors, he can go ahead. But I hope he also, he also tends to know that if his salaries are not paid for just a month, if he will ask for a no work, no pay to be made on those in control of his salaries. He should also be asked also to know that if he's made to lose loved ones and lose, lose um, relatives that are doctors or nurses or pharmacists or medical lab scientists and they're not paid insurance, if it would be good for those that he work for. He should also be, also be known to know for if he cannot pay good hazard allowance to uh, 5,000 naira to the all health sectors and sit down in upper chambers and get 1.2 million naira for hardship allowance, it should be known also to the government. These are what we ask for. They should be more, they should be more responsible to the plights of us and not just the, the puppet makers. Hmm. I'm sorry for the word I just used, but I'm just being truthful. All right. You know, there are some people who still believe that medical doctors have no rights to strike and that they've sworn an oath to protect lives and that there are lots of people who need urgent medical care but can't access that because of the current strike. So how would you convince those people to see your point of view, you know, in regards to the uh, death in healthcare infrastructure? For example, I'm looking at a picture that NAD Nigeria put up, and it's a dark room of, you know, surgeons using their flashlights from their phones to carry out an operation. So how would you convince people to see, you know, where you're headed with the strike? Well, I'll start by this, that um, Nigerian Asian resident doctors have a workforce of over 16,000 residents and will form the major part of um, the workforce in the hospitals. But we also know that we have senior colleagues that are the medical and dental, um, the, the consultants that still mount the accident emergencies, map the wards and map the clinics, and they have been able to help to see that Nigeria still gets some level of care in the hospitals. But we also know that in the, um, the oath given by doctors, it also states in the oath that the physicians should take care of his or her own health first before they take care of other people's health. We also know that um, members are made to be punished when they do not um, treat patients or when they are make a hungry man go see a patient when he, he is also hungry, is not well mentally, physically, and financially. So what service do you expect him or her to give to the patient? As of that time, he's also a patient because financially, mentally, physically, it's not, you say he's in good health. So All you right. want such person to see you and make mistake, mistakes. Okay. I don't think, I think the answer would be no. 
All right. Um, I think uh, we would uh, wrap it up here. Um, Dr. Uilawa Okwaiesui, I hope I pronounced that right, uh, President, National Association of Resident Doctors. Um, as we, of course, get more information, we'll definitely bring you in to uh, share your thoughts with us. And, uh, of course, uh, as the strike goes on, thank you very much for your time this morning. Thank you again. Thank you for having me. And have a lovely day. You too. You too. All right. Stay with us here on The Breakfast. There's a lot more conversations coming your way this morning on PLOS TV Africa. The conversation on banditry, kidnapping, a former president, uh, Lucia Gwambasanjo, Sheikh Ahmad Gumi. Also, some of all of this we're talking about next here on The Breakfast. <laughs>